back on video again. First I want to start with the Sufi invocation because that helps me get started with things. Towards the one the perfection of love, harmony and beauty. The only being united with all the illuminated souls who form the embodiment to the master, the spirit of God. Bismillah Rahman Rahim we begin in the name of God who is most merciful and most compassionate. So, <coughs> um, a few years ago on Facebook, I saw a friend of mine, a musician friend of mine, um, who challenged herself to do a hundred days on video, on Facebook, and she was a singer, so she sang a song every day for a hundred days and recorded herself on video, on Facebook, and I was inspired by that project, and I was inspired by other people who did Facebook Lives, and um, not daily also. I was inspired by his story and how he got started um, doing his videos. And so a few years back I decided I too would put myself in front of the camera every day for a hundred days no matter what happened. If I was really scared, if um, my voice was shaking, um, no matter what came out of me, a hundred days a hundred videos, and, and I did do that um, a few years back, but I am out of practice with videos. <laughs> now when I did that project, I was really, really nervous and scared in the beginning, and because I'm not as strong at talking as I am at writing, and nonverbal things are like dancing. And the closest I come to being comfortable verbally is when I'm singing, <laughs> because that's artistic. Um, but I do tend to get nervous over the phone and over video. Um, and, and I'm a dancer and a singer, so in the past, before the 100 Days Project, I would sometimes record myself in order to share with my friends. And I found that when I was in front of the camera, it took away the sacredness for me. I would get nervous when I'm singing alone at home in my living room, I'm not nervous. When I'm creating my dances, I'm not nervous, I'm in ecstasy. But once the recording became involved, the perfectionist comes in, and the doubt comes in, and the fear comes in, and I record things over and over and over trying to get it right and it changed it into work <laughs> um, it became a chore instead of a sacred act of self-expression that I just wanted to share with my friends so um, I challenged myself to the hundred days because I wanted to see if I put myself in front of the camera for a hundred days if that would change. Maybe I would be able to be more natural in front of the camera while recording. And I found that it was true that in the beginning I was really, really scared. And by the end I was really, really ecstatic. It was like a, another spiritual practice. It was another sacred thing. It was another artistic thing to just share whatever bubbles up for the day, whether it's something that hurt me that I wanted to talk about, or um, spiritual practice, or singing, or anything um, that I wanted to talk about or share. And by the end of that project, I was 
feeling good in front of the camera, but that was a few years back, so now I'm greasing up the gears a little bit. Now, the last time I did a video, which was not too long ago, and I think I was the only one who looked at it, <laughs> um, it was to share about how difficult my work environment is with me, is for me right now, and I didn't share any details about it. I just emoted. I described how trauma feels. And I was very upset on the day that I did that video. That was a couple of weeks ago. And, and I also, because one of the ways that I self-nourish myself is, is through singing, and sometimes it's just spontaneous little songs that come through me, not to perform, not necessarily to share with anyone else, but to soothe myself. It's like a spiritual practice in the form of a song. And every once in a while, I'm not really a songwriter in a professional sense, but every once in a while some little thing will come through that is just the right medicine for me in that moment in what I'm going through. So my other reason for sharing that video a couple of weeks ago was to share my song and to share my affirmation. And I hope that by telling, by letting my vulnerability come through by letting the world, <laughs> if anyone watches, see me in that vulnerable state, in that state of trauma, and also see how I self-soothe. Um, maybe it'll help someone. Um, so that's why I wanted to share about this journey that I am now in. The last time I did a lot of video sharing, it was primarily artistic and spiritual, and there was a lot of love and a lot of ecstasy and a lot of peace being shared, and now I'm sharing something different because it's about something that's hard and that's painful. And um, I hesitate to share it because there's this fear that if I, if I tell a story, if I emphasize it, it's going to increase my pain. That's my fear. It's like, man, I was just starting to get better, feel better, and, and now I'm going to talk about this and it's probably going to drag me down. So I hesitate and at the same time I'm feeling drawn to do it, so I'm doing it. I, I want to document how I'm moving through this, the ups and the downs, and what happened. Last time I didn't share what happened, I just shared how it felt. At some point I'm going to share what happened. And one of the things about today's sharing, my supervisor went on vacation two weeks ago. He, he's been on vacation for two weeks. And the video that I shared last time was before he left. And this video is after two weeks of him being gone. So one of the things I wanted to document is the difference. The difference, because my last sharing, I was very distressed. And by the time he left on vacation, even, even though I do all these spiritual practices, and even though I've been around the bend of suffering a few times, and some part of my consciousness knows that no matter how bad it is, it will get better because it's happened so many times. But in my last sharing, and not by the time he left for vacation, I felt so psychologically distressed by the situation at work that I was scared that maybe my psyche is going to break apart so much that it won't repair itself this time. And now, after two weeks of him being away, as you can see, my psyche is not permanently broken. <laughs> um, and that's primarily why I'm doing a video, because he's going to be back tomorrow, and, and I don't want to be too busy to do this video. I want it to be seen. The difference. The difference. 
um, on the day that he left, <laughs> I went up into ecstasy. I knew that my spirit was going to come back home to me. And it did. It did. It, some part of me was scared that I would never recover, but some part of myself knew he's gone. He's out of my world. He's out of my consciousness. I'm going to be thinking about other things. I'm not going to have the continual triggering going on, and it's going to be good. And in just a few days, I started to feel my spirit come back. I started to feel like a being of light again. And by the end of the two weeks, it went beyond just feeling okay again to feeling like someone who can give blessing again. Like my light body just got really big again and it's like, oh yeah, I remember this. This is who I am. This is how it ought to be. <laughs> um, so needless to say that what is going on at work is extremely detrimental. It, it's having a very bad effect. And um, on the spiritual path, there are different aspects. There's different ways of approaching life. And some people who are heavily invested in mastery might feel that there's some kind of giant spiritual doggy bone for me because <laughs> I'm in this awful situation and it's going to make me strong and seeing it through, not running from it will make me strong. Um, and then there's an aspect of sainthood. Maybe I should just be loving everyone, and, and maybe I shouldn't, um, maybe I should just try and forgive this person, just love this person, just open my heart more. But from a psychological vantage point, I feel as a matter of self-respect that, that I need to not try and love this person, actually. <laughs> I have come to a very different place in my spiritual path now than I was when I was when I had started out. And I'm kind of in a no more BS place. I I am tired of victims having to forgive perpetrators <laughs> over and over and over. And now as we can see we have a spiritual um, political terrain, and to me spiritual also, quite frankly, where, from my perspective anyways, there's a collective perpetrator and a collective victim, <laughs> um, and, and I am tired. I am tired. I, I feel like there's a, a razor's edge between spirituality and enabling, and I've been um, immersing in um, Facebook posts and also YouTube videos that are covering the more psychological terrain of abuse patterns and trauma and PTSD and narcissistic abuse and narcissistic empathic pairings and um, I'm hearing a lot of women on Facebook challenge the spiritual status quo of forgiveness and bringing up the whole topic of toxic positivity and enabling. And I'm starting to really look at this and feel there's a part of me that is just saying no more no more. <laughs> we can't just, we can't just try and act like something is not wrong when something is wrong, because how is it ever going to change? This is the spiritual dilemma that I am in, is that the justice warrior in me, and, and the, also the, um, 
abuse victim in me wants to fight back. I want to say, e uh, no, uh, this is stopping right now. <laughs> this is stopping, and I'm not forgiving anything, particularly when there's no remorse yet. So no, I'm not forgiving. I'm speaking out. I'm setting boundaries. And then there's the part of me that worries if I do that, I'm not in my peace. And that's the, the big spiritual dilemma, and I don't have an answer particularly. I just know that I weave in and out of those different ways of looking at it. Um, part of me just wants to quit my job. When things are really bad, I just want to walk away from all of it, from, from my nice, cushy state job with excellent benefits and the best pay I've ever had in my life, and just leave it out of self-respect, self because I will not be abused. Like, none of that is as important as my well-being, and I will not be abused, and if, if I've raised the issue and no one's responding in an effective and appropriate way and it's not being corrected how much psychological um, damage should I allow to occur before I just say okay I need to be done with this and just trust the universe that somehow I'll be provided for and, and then, so from that vantage point, the spiritual perspective is <laughs> trust in God <laughs> um, and having more invested in my soul and the world of light than I have invested in my career. And then on the other hand, this is earth, and do I want to be, do I want to risk being poverty stricken? No, I do not. So I'm kind of hoping that something will work out and move this in a better direction at work. Um, sometimes I think, well, if I meditate enough, if I feel enough light and enough love, somehow, magically, <laughs> everything will change or it doesn't change, but I feel fantastic anyways, but we're not there yet. I do megatons of spiritual practice and none of it is enough for me to feel just fine <laughs> while the situation is happening. So I'm a little apprehensive how it's going to play out when this person comes back, but I feel great now and that's what I want to document. Um, this is 18 minutes long, so that seems long enough. I just want to um, do my song again. Last time I did my song, I was very nervous and I was very emotional. And this time I'm happy. So um, I want to do my song again from a more confident place. Um, and I hope that my song will help someone. It's definitely helping me. I do this song every morning. And if I get distressed, I do it more than every morning. I do it at least twice a day or even more than twice a day. If something comes up, I'll do it again. And the intent of this song is to cleanse my mind of the psychological abuse. That's what I'm calling it. Some people call it supervision. <laughs> Depending on your beliefs about what supervision is, in some people's minds, this is just like normal and it's supervision and to me it's um, causing me panic attacks and it's shocking because I have spiritual values and I believe in kindness so I don't quite accept that this is what supervision should be um, and um, it's the song is to cleanse that, to cleanse the fear, to cleanse the pain, to cleanse whatever it was that they said to you that is causing you pain, and to know that you, you don't have to keep that. It, it's, just like, it's just like poison. It's mental and emotional and spiritual poison that someone is forcibly 
feeding you. So you need, or well, I don't know if I should say the words you need, <laughs> but I practice spiritual practices to try and re to wash that away, wash it away, and come back into my peace and my wholeness and my joy and my love and my light. Because no one and no thing and no place and no job is, is worth my psyche and my soul and my spirit being torn apart. It's just not. So the spiritual practices are tools to bring us back home. And I use them <laughs> a lot. So this is my song that was specifically to address gaslighting the things that they say <laughs> that are poisonous. <laughs> um, yeah, so. <clears throat> My mind is washed and cleansed with pure light and pure love. My mind is washed and cleansed with your light and your love, my mind is washed and cleansed with your light and your love, my belly is washed and cleansed with Thank you.